Philemon chapter 1 verse 6 the believers authority we're looking at the heritage of the believer and one of those things we're going to be looking at this week is you know the authority of the believer Philemon chapter 1 verse 6 that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus brother Paul prays that prayer for Philemon if you look at verse 4 of Philemon chapter 1 verse 4 I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers and what was the prayer next verse hearing of thy love and faith so Philemon already had love and Philemon already had faith hearing of your love and faith that means that's what you already have which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all sins so he was not praying for Philemon to have faith he was not praying for Philemon to have love because he already had Philemon's faith and Philemon's love all right now please pay attention so Philemon was already flowing in love and in faith so the prayer now is critical verse 6 that the communication of thy faith may become effectual remember he already said hearing of your love and your faith now he says the communication of that faith that you already have the communication of that faith that you already had because he has a heart of his faith he has heard of his love so the prayer was not for somebody to get faith it was a prayer for somebody that already had faith many people think that they have a faith challenge you will hear some people say the reason why your prayers are not answered is because you don't have faith and sometimes you will hear some preachers will tell some people the reason why you're not healed is because you don't have faith all right so people think they have a faith challenge the reason why i can't get what i'm looking for is because i don't have faith all right but you don't have a faith problem you don't have a faith problem otherwise you will not be referred to as a believer you don't have a faith problem believers don't have you know um a love problem hearing of your faith and your love which you have towards the lord jesus in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 galatians chapter 2 verse number 20 i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me so faith is ours in christ faith is ours in christ no believer has a faith problem god gives us faith while we were sinners god gives us faith while we were sinners the gospel does not demand faith the gospel does not demand faith the gospel supplies faith the gospel does not demand faith the gospel supplies faith romans chapter 10 verse 17 romans chapter 10 verse 17 so then faith by hearing so then faith by hearing and hearing by the word of god the original says by hearing the message of christ so he tells you faith by hearing then he tells you how that faith comes hearing the message of christ hearing the message of christ god does not demand faith from a sinner god does not demand faith from a sinner god gives faith to the sinner god does not demand faith from a sinner god gives faith to the sinner the sinner cannot know what jesus has done the sinner cannot know what jesus has done he can only believe the sinner cannot know what jesus has done he can only believe he can only believe that's why second corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 will put it like this second corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 
But if our gospel be heed, it is heed to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds. That's why they are lost, because their minds are blinded, which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. So they are lost because they believe not. Why don't they believe? Because the God of this world has blinded their minds. So the challenge for the sinner is to believe. The challenge for the sinner is to believe. The challenge for the believer is to know. The challenge for the sinner is to believe. The challenge for the believer is to know. I repeat again, the challenge for the sinner is to believe, while the challenge for the believer is to know. Are you still here? All right, so the unbeliever is to believe. Mark 16, 15 to 16. Mark 15, 16 to 16. 15 to 16. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Next verse. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth and he that believeth not shall be damned he that believeth so the sinner's challenge is to believe john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life believe it in verse 14 to 15 the pretext of john 3 and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Next verse. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Believe it. Believe it. Believe. John 3, 36. The challenge of the sinner is to believe. The believer doesn't have a faith problem. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. He that believeth not is exposed to the wrath of God. The problem of the sinner is to believe. John 6 47. John 6 47. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So the sinner's challenge is to believe. John chapter 5 verse 24. John chapter 5 verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death to life is passed from death to life so the issue with the unbeliever is to believe not to know the unbeliever does not need too much exegesis the unbeliever does not need too much epignosis all the unbeliever needs to hear is the good news that will bring him to faith the message of christ christ died he was buried on the third day he rose again once he believes that he becomes a believer then when he becomes a believer the challenge of the believer is to know the challenge of the believer is to know knowledge happens to believers faith happens to unbelievers knowledge happens to believers faith happens to unbelievers god gives the sinner his own faith god gives the sinner his own faith but god gives to the believer revelation knowledge god gives to the sinner his own faith but god gives to the believer revelation knowledge i repeat god gives to the sinner his own faith the faith of God. The faith of God. That is why no sinner can believe without hearing the message of faith. It is called the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith which we preach. What we preach is the word of faith. 
When the sinner hears the word of faith and believes that word of faith, that believing is God's faith that enabled it. The believing of the sinner became possible by God's faith. It became possible by God's faith. So the believer already has faith. Every believer has faith. Say with me, I have the faith of God. Can I hear you say it like power city? Let me hear you say it one more time. All right, so the believer has the faith of God or the believer has what we call the spirit of faith. The believer already has the spirit of faith. The believer has the faith of God. The believer has the faith of the Son of God. He has the faith of God. He has the spirit of faith. He has the faith of the Son of God. He already has it. He's not looking for it. The believer doesn't have a faith problem. And the believer has the gift of faith. He has the gift of faith. He has the faith of God. He has the faith of the Son of God. He has the spirit of faith. So the issue for the believer is not faith. The believer doesn't have a faith problem no christian has a faith problem and also no christian has a power problem no christian has a power problem there is no power problem with any believer ephesians chapter 1 verse 16 <clears throat> you don't have a power problem you don't have a power problem so everybody told me i don't have a faith problem i have the faith of god I don't have a power problem all right let's work on that since now to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers and what are the prayers next verse that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom that is revelation the spirit of wisdom that is revelation in the knowledge of him 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 that the, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know that you may know what is the hope of his calling what the riches of the glory of his inheritance what the riches of the glory of his inheritance what the riches of the glory of his inheritance what the riches of the glory of his inheritance, of of his inheritance. my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory what the riches of the glory of his inheritance i want you to see something that's why i'm my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory what the riches of the glory of his inheritance what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints in the saints the riches of the glory of his inheritance is not coming from anywhere is in the saints every saint is a container of the riches of the glory of his inheritance the saint is not in need of glory because the saint is a is a is a is a reservoir of the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the riches of the glory of his inheritance is where in the saint where are the saints in this building say with me i house the riches of the glory of god's inheritance i didn't hear your amen the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory where is the riches of his glory in the saints so where is the supply coming from in the saints so all the supply you need is inside you right now the believer is not a needy the believer is not a needy the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saint and god supplies the need of the saints according to his riches in glory and the riches of the glory of his inheritance is where in the saints so the saint is a con custodian of the riches of the glory all right um that's very important please take note of that <clears throat> So let's read on. 
the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints next verse and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what we believe according to the working of his mighty power toward us who believe the power of god is toward us who believe god's power is toward us who believe and there is a walking of his mighty power on the inside of the believer all of god's power is in the believer the believer is god's powerhouse the believer doesn't need power some ignoramus folks what did i call them yeah some ignoramus folks said that we we are just lecturers that me and the people that are preaching the message of jesus that we are lecturers that we don't have power that we are just lecturers we just give lecture without power <laughs> to them power is falling people down and making them behave like epileptic cases is denying the saints their dignity making caricature of god's inheritance in the believer they call it power the power is not drama the power is what has been wrought in the believer the believer is the container of power when the believer moves all of god's power is moving huh. all of god's power and it's not for showmanship the power is not for showmanship the power is in the believer to manifest the finished work of christ on the earth so the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according that power is to us who believe it's within us it's within believers according to the working of his mighty power there is a working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead same power wrought in christ has been wrought in the believer when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies glory to god next verse far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come so the believer doesn't have a power problem furthermore ephesians 3:20 now to him that is of that is of that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power from above huh where is the power the power is at work where inside the believer all of god's power is at work in the believer say with me i don't have a power problem yeah you don't have a faith problem you don't have a power problem you don't have a love problem the love of god has been shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost you don't have a love problem you don't have a power problem you don't have a faith problem the believer doesn't have any of those problems teaching good amen acts 1 8 you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses the day you were born of the spirit and the day the holy spirit manifested in you utterance came through you the power of god was set in motion to manifest luke 24 48 a lot of scriptures good for your health and you are witnesses of these things next verse and behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry in the city of jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high so the believer doesn't have a power problem 
Again, the believer doesn't have a spirit problem. The believer doesn't have a spirit problem. Breathe upon me, bread of God. Get born again, my friend. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Get born again, my friend. Get born again. Anointing fall on me. Get born again, my friend. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Jesus said, the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. It shall be in you a well. How can a well be moving and looking for how to fill a cup? Is it addition by subtraction? Don't let anybody rob you of your reality in Christ. You don't need a cup to be filled. You are a well springing up to everlasting life. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Glory to God. Say with me, I don't have a faith problem. I don't have a love problem. I don't have a power problem. I don't have a spirit problem. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Wait for August. Wait for August. Don't stress yourself. Just wait for August if you're in Nigeria. Rain will fall. He didn't say, I will pour down my spirit upon all flesh. He says, I will pour out. What you pour out is what is in when something is in you pour out don't 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 make me believe that your father wasted his school fees on your head you should be able to know the difference between pour down and pour out he's pouring out of you because he's in you say i don't have a spirit problem yeah. the believer doesn't have a spirit problem romans chapter 8 verse 9 <clears throat> Romans 8 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Somebody shout, I am in the spirit. Now say very loud, I am always in the spirit. Always. You are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So the Holy Spirit, another name for the Holy Spirit is the spirit of christ is the same he's the holy spirit he's the spirit of christ he's the spirit of god holy spirit spirit of christ spirit of god are you still here give me the next verse the next verse verse 10 and if christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Next verse. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth where? In you. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. 13 for if you live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live verse 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god say with me i don't have a leading problem say i am led led say led say led say i will not be led he said, because I am led. So the leading of the spirit is your natural heritage in Christ. Is your natural heritage in Christ. Your natural heritage in Christ. Now watch this next verse. For you have not received, received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry. So the spirit of his son, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption. 
is the same same holy spirit spirit of adoption spirit of his son spirit of god look at verse 16 the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of god you don't have a spirit problem you don't have a faith problem you don't have a power problem so what was paul praying for philemon for then philemon verse 6 that the communication of your faith faith given to sinners god doesn't give faith to believers why faith comes once faith comes once the day you had the gospel and believed the gospel faith came and from that day faith is residence in you that's why you are called a believer that's why you are called a believer faith does not come twice faith comes once so you are a believer because you had the gospel and the gospel enabled you to believe enabled you to believe all right so when you hear the gospel that's the outcome of the gospel it makes a believer out of you so it says the communication that's the issue that the communication that's the key there the koinonia the communication the sharing of your faith you have faith but you have to share your faith the sharing another word is the participation the participation that is your faith getting engaged to benefit your body the participation the sharing of your faith so it's time for your faith to participate in your life or it's time for your faith to do a walk in your life so the walking the participation the sharing the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging the word acknowledge is the word epignosis like we know which simply means precise understanding precise knowledge accurate interpretation or comprehensive insight that is your faith will only work to the degree of your knowledge your faith will only work to the degree of your knowledge your faith will only walk to the degree of your knowledge he didn't say the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you and you know if he had said the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you somebody can say i have talents i want to acknowledge my motivational talents i want to acknowledge my football talent I want to acknowledge my singing talent if he had stopped then he will have zeroed everything to human performance i want to acknowledge my guitar skill i want to acknowledge my golfing skill but he didn't stop at every good thing that is in you he now qualified it that is in you because you are in christ every good thing is in you in christ somebody shout i'm in christ okay in christ so your faith will walk to the proportion of your knowledge precisely your precise knowledge your faith will walk to the proportion of the accurate knowledge of christ that you have your faith will work in proportion with the accuracy of the knowledge of christ that you have it's like some christians you ask them are you righteous they said no 
Are you washed by the blood? They say yes. Are you righteous? No. Are you washed by the blood? Yes. I am washed in the blood. Huh? Okay. So they believe that they are washed by the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, they believe that they are washed by the blood, but they don't believe that they are righteous. Okay? They don't believe that they are righteous. So they are washed by the blood of Jesus to be unrighteous. They are washed by the blood of Jesus to be unrighteous. The problem with such believers is that they know about the blood, but they don't know what the blood does. So they don't have accurate knowledge. They don't have precise knowledge. They, they have an idea. It's not enough for you to have an idea. You must have accurate, precise understanding. If I'm teaching, say I hear you. Some believers believe that they are born again. But they don't believe that they are saints. Are you born again? Yes. Are you a saint? No. Who are saints? Those that die holy. Saint Murumba. Now you know what I'm talking about. Saint Christopher. Old boy as was here. <laughs> a saint is not one who died holy. A saint is one whom Jesus died for. When Jesus died for you and you accept what he did for you, you became a saint. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Where are the holy brethren in the building? Somebody shout, I am as holy as Jesus. Now say very loud, I don't have the holiness problem. You must acknowledge. You must acknowledge. So having an idea doesn't just do it. You will need to have a precise understanding. And that's why we keep teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching. Teaching everywhere all over the world. Teaching in this house without ceasing. Teaching all over the place. Every little opportunity. We're teaching and teaching and teaching. We want to bring believers and bring all men to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Now, if I am praying for you, if I'm praying for you to have revelation knowledge, if I'm praying for you that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, and you're not reading your Bible, that prayer will never be answered. If I'm praying for you to have revealed knowledge, and I'm praying for you to come to a place of epignosis, and you're not studying your Bible, that prayer is a wasted investment. And if I'm praying for you to come to a place of revealed knowledge, and you don't come for Bible teaching, and you don't sit down under, you know, the teaching ministry of God's word, you can never come to that accurate knowledge. Why? Because but prayer for the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened will be answered when you sit down to be taught and when you sit at home to study what you have been taught. That is when that prayer will find expression in you accepting responsibility. The responsibility to study and the responsibility to make yourself available for the teaching of God's word. There are no two ways about it. It's not magical. Gift is, I mean, knowledge is not a gift. Knowledge is not a gift. Knowledge is not a gift. Knowledge is acquired. Are we still here? It won't work. You don't show up in church. When it's time to come to Bible study, you look for, is it Telemundo? Z World, eh? Telemundo. And you're looking for revealed knowledge. <laughs> the prayer only works for someone who is exposed to the world. Uh, you know, it works for only someone who is exposed to the ministry of the world. So if someone is praying this prayer for you, 
you must rest assured that you are studying and you are keeping yourself in an environment where you're going to be taught we're teaching today tomorrow friday saturday and sunday morning two services all teaching 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 why we want to bring you to a place of revealed knowledge of all that is yours in christ and how to engage their manifestation so you can enjoy what christ has made available to the believer teaching good tonight hallelujah i said hallelujah so he indicates in that prayer for philemon that there's a problem the believer will have and that problem is knowledge that problem is knowledge so the only challenge a believer might have is not a faith challenge it's not a spirit challenge it's not a righteousness challenge it's not even a love challenge but a problem challenge knowledge knowledge everything which is in you in you acknowledging every good thing which is in you in christ god is not going to do he has done all but you must acknowledge the acknowledging is where the believer comes in that's responsibility acknowledge acknowledging accurate knowledge not an idea are you still here so if i don't know what is in me i just need to look at what is in christ if i don't know what is in me i just have to look at what is in christ if i want to know whether i have faith i look at christ does christ have faith yes then i have faith if i want to know whether i have love i look at christ does christ have love yes so i have love what is in me is what is in christ so to know what is in me i look at what is in christ whatever i find in christ is in me amen i said amen so when you pray to know what is in christ you are praying to know what is in you when you pray to know what is in christ you are praying to know what is in you because whatever you see in christ is what is in you in philemon 1 6 please give me the amplified version and i pray that the participation in and sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in identification with christ jesus the things that are ours in identification with christ jesus what is not in him is not in me and somebody says well but there, you have a generational cause i'm coming christ do you have generational cause i don't have generational cause somebody says you have high blood pressure i'm coming christ do you have high blood pressure no i don't have high blood pressure uh, uh, uh. you must you must acknowledge what is in you which is what is where in christ so if it's not in christ it's not in me if it's in christ it's in me because what is in christ is what is in me i must acknowledge that acknowledging every good thing that is in you in christ Christ reflects me to me. He no no ne 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 le ne moja kala na ma. Hey, are you still in the building? Christ reflects me to me. I reflect Christ to Christ. We reflect each other. Teaching good.
So in Paul's prayers, our eyes are supposed to be opened to see Jesus. Seeing Jesus is seeing myself. <laughs> Peter's eyes were open in Matthew 16, 13. Who do men say that I the son of man am? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter's eyes were opened by revelation. In other words, the Holy Spirit opened Peter's eyes to see Jesus. The Holy Spirit opened Peter's eyes to see Jesus. Alright? But Peter stopped there. All Peter saw was Jesus. Peter stopped there. But further in the epistles, you will see that everything that he calls Jesus is who the believer is. Everything that he calls Jesus is who the believer is. That is the revelation of the epistles. It's called identification. The father today is opening our eyes not just to see Jesus, but to see ourselves in Jesus. Not just to see Jesus, but to see me in him. Because everything in Christ is in us. John 16, 12. Are you getting blessed tonight? John 16, 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Hold on. Jesus has spent three and a half years teaching some guys. Twelve plus seventy. Twelve disciples and seventy junior disciples. He has spent three and a half years teaching them. And after three and a half years, he's about to go. He says, ladies and gentlemen, all of you come for announcement. And they all assemble before Jesus. And he says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. And I'm about to go. So I'm sure they will say, can't we have another three and a half years? So you're leaving us as dummies? Are you leaving us as illiterates? Three and a half years, I've not said what I want to say. But I have to go. Okay? Then he looked at them and he said, How be it? How be it? When he put it up for me, verse 13. When he 13, 16, 13. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into the, the, the original is into all the truth into all the truth into all the truth now let me ask all of you a question who is the spirit of truth huh the spirit of truth is the spirit of jesus because jesus is the way the truth the spirit of truth who is truth jesus so who is the spirit of truth the spirit of Jesus. When he, the spirit of truth is come. When he, my own spirit is come. What I didn't teach you, he will show you all of it. That means, when I go, I come. You didn't hear that. When I go, I come. Question. Why do you have to go to come? Hmm. Kebadaga. Why do you have to go to come so we can know everything? Okay, question. Who are you going for? He is going for us. The going is for us. Because it is the going that will meet the demands that will qualify us to receive the spirit of truth. In the going will be the preparation for the coming to be effective. Mm. 
If you are still here, see I'm here. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on with me. The spirit of truth is the spirit of Christ. That's why the Bible says, if anyone has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. In Romans 8 verse 10. He is also called the spirit of adoption. The spirit of truth, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of adoption in Romans 8, 15 and Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. The spirit of adoption is the spirit of truth. Is the spirit of Christ. Why is he the spirit of truth? Because Jesus is the truth. So what is the spirit of truth going to do? The spirit of truth will unveil truth. The spirit of truth will unveil the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. So what is the spirit of Jesus doing among us today? Unveiling Jesus. Unveiling Christ to us. Why is he unveiling Jesus to us? He's unveiling Jesus to us so we can know us. He's unveiling Jesus to us so we can know us. To know me, I've got to know him. He's unveiling Jesus so we know who we are. Because the Holy Spirit will take Jesus and reveal to us. He takes us into Christ. The Spirit will take us into Christ. And reveal Christ to us. He takes us into Christ. And reveals Christ to us. If I'm teaching say I hear you. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit reveals Christ to us. And as he's revealing Christ to us. He is revealing us. And who we are. And what we have. John 15 26. Woo. But when the comforter is come, hey, hold on, hold on, church, hold on. Are you still here? If you're in the building, shout glory. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth. Who is the spirit of truth? The spirit of Jesus, which proceeded from the Father. Anger. Which proceeded from the Father. He shall testify of me. Huh? He shall testify of who? Of Jesus. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Hmm? Hey. The father will send where? In my name. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Bring all things to your remembrance. Hmm. It's like I look at you and I say, hey, do you remember? Do you remember the meaning of APC? He said, ah, when I used to be in Nigeria years ago, I used to hear that thing called APC. He said, do you know the meaning of APC? He said, ah, APC, ah. Then I say, all, and it goes progressive. So what did I do? When I said all, I gave him a reminder. And that reminder helped him to recollect. Yeah? <laughs> he shall bring He shall bring all things to 
to your remembrance. You know, Maranatha used to sing one song many years ago. But this, this is my body, which is broken for you. Then, na 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 na. Remember me. <laughs> you will soon know why I'm laughing. <clears throat> Remember me. Many of you that have been to those churches, when they are bringing that bread. They do it in a very solemn environment because they are doing a memorial and forces remembrance day. is the anger many people have when we said communion is not new testament it's like we took away from them the, the remembrance service why are you denying jesus memorial service hey he said these are blind for they don't know so remembrance to them is to recollect but remembrance in scripture is not to recollect. So what is Jesus saying? Is Jesus saying that the Holy Spirit will bring back to their recollection? But that will be contradictory. Because remember, he already said, I have many things to say to you. But you cannot be a means. I have not said it. So he cannot say the Holy Ghost will bring back to your remembrance what I didn't say. Because if I didn't say it, you can't remember it. You can only remember what you have been taught. But because I have not taught you, because you cannot bear it, the Holy Ghost will bring back to your remembrance. That means that remembrance is not recollection. So what is remembrance? Remembrance in Bible is he will bring to your understanding me. He will make you understand me. So when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, he was saying, do this with an understanding that this is a pointer to me. When you take the bread and the wine, since I have not died, don't eat it like breakfast. When you are eating it, let your mind be picturing what I am going to do for you that will be permanent better than this constant bread and ribena. Remembrance is understanding of me. I'm teaching here. He wasn't saying, since my body has been buried, there is no more body cut bread use bread to revive my body since my blood finished as i was walking on the road they were beating me i don't have blood again use ribena to resuscitate me so that the bread and the ribena can act on my behalf mm -mm. Mm -mm. that's not what he was saying what he was saying is since i am yet to carry out the event and you have to be thinking of what i will do for you eat it and drink it with an understanding that this is a type of what i will be doing for you now that he has done it why do you need a type now ee, ee, are you still in this building I said, are you still in this building? So, it 
is not a memorial service. When Jesus said remembrance, he was talking of understanding. The word understanding. Same word in 1 Corinthians 2.16. We have the mind of Christ. The understanding of Christ. Same thing you will see in the book of 1 John 5.20. The son of man is come and has given us an understanding or a remembrance. An understanding or a remembrance. That is when I look at the scriptures, I see things with the mind and understanding of Christ. Let me give, me, let me give you a little illustration. I'm about to close. Are you blessed tonight? How many of you remember that Jesus mm -mm, one time was in the temple? And he said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Destroy this temple. When Jesus was saying temple, temple is temple, even though temple is not temple. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So when he was saying, destroy this temple, they were looking at the temple of Solomon but he was referring to his body. Okay. Look at that John 2.19. Uh -uh. John 2.19. Jesus answered and said unto them. Destroy this temple. And in three days I will raise it up. Next verse. Then said the Jews. Forty and six years was this temple in building. Will thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Watch this, watch this, watch this. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered. That is, they understood that he had said this unto them and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said so when he was talking of temple they were thinking of a physical building but when he rose from the dead they remembered or understood that the temple was his body just like bread and ribena until you understand this resurrection you will not stop eating bread and ribena anybody eating bread and ribena has not understood this resurrection If not that they understood, they will have been at that temple getting angry that Jesus wants to pull it down, not knowing that his death was the pulling down of the temple. So when you study the scriptures, you must desire revealed knowledge. Let me shock you with another one. Can I give you another one? Okay, follow me. The book of Kebata, Matthew 12, 1. Matthew 12, 1. At that time, Jesus went out on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were unhungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Next verse. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples, do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Next verse. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was unhungered and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread which was not lawful for him to eat neither for them which were with him but only for the priests or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless but I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple so when the Bible is talking of temple, it's not talking of a building. It's talking of Jesus. Uh, next verse, next verse. Before I start speaking in tongues, next verse. But if you had known what this minute, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You will not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the sabbath day sabbath is not a day sabbath is a man but when you don't have revelation you will be worshiping on saturday
it takes revelation to know that worship is not a day worship is a person you don't worship on a day you worship a person and when you are in that person your sunday can be monday it can be tuesday it can be friday it can be wednesday it can be any day it's no more a day it's a personality jesus is the lord or jesus is sabbath personified am i communicating here remember is emotion leave that in well, what is that with any it's emotion with ignorance combined with fear so when the three of them come you must have that yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut, shut up if you want to area area in knowledge menga boraka tonege geliba dogara kataya hey somebody shout holy ghost John 6 31 as I close if I follow you guys I won't close this eyes our fathers and are you watching did it manna in the desert as it is written he gave them bread from heaven to eat as it is what talk, talk, talk to me pastor. as it is what written he gave them what bread from where heaven to eat next verse then Jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you moses gave you not that bread from heaven what you people eat at that you say is from heaven was not from heaven this is not angel gabriel talking this is jesus but my father give at you the true bread from heaven now follow the discourse next verse you will love this for the bread of God is he. For the bread of God is he. Is not it. The bread of God is he. Is not an it. I'm teaching. I'm, te I'm teaching in this place tonight. For the bread of God is he. Which cometh down from heaven. And giveth life unto the world he that has the son has life receiving christ is eating bread now follow next verse then said they unto him lord evermore give us this bread because we don't have to spend our money anymore and jesus said unto them i am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst so faith is drinking the blood faith is eating the bread so the day you receive the message of his death burial and resurrection you ate the bread and drank the blood and it is eternal now watch next verse but i say unto you that you also have seen me and believe not next verse all that the father giveth me shall come to me and he that cometh to me i will in no wise he's talking about faith in the gospel faith in the gospel faith in the gospel next verse for i came down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him that sent me next verse and this is the father's will which had sent me that of all which he had given me i should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day and this is the will of him that sent me okay that everyone which seeth the son how do you see him believe it on him okay may have everlasting life and i will raise him up at the last day watch next verse the jews then murmured at him because he said i am the bread which came down from heaven 
He told them that thing you're eating is a waste of time. I am the one to eat. And they said, is not this Joseph, I mean Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, how is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? The manger where they gave back to him is still there. As an antique. As a monument. Historical landmark. Museum material. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Mama not among yourselves. Next verse. No man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up on the last day. As it is written, next verse, in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that had heard and had learned of the father cometh unto me. Next verse. Not that any man had seen the father, save he which is of God. He had seen the father. Talking about himself. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Next. I am that bread of life. I am the bread. Bread is a person. It's not bakery material. Next verse. Your fathers did eat rabbina and bread in the wilderness and are dead. Tasty time. Agege bread. Two, one, two. Eh? This is the bread. This ebuna namahata. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Bush, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. That is when I died. When I died, I became the bread that men can eat and live forever. How is that bread communicated? Through the gospel. How do you eat it? By believing. When do you believe? What do you have? Everlasting life. If I'm teaching, say, I hear you. Let's finish it. Let's finish it. Let's finish it. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, what will be the outcome? Eternal life. So it cannot be bread from bakery and ribena. Those things don't give eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, what gives eternal life? The gospel. So bread and blood will be what? The gospel of his death, burial, and resurrection. When you believe that gospel, what did you do? You ate bread. When you ate bread, what happened to you? You have eternal life. So right now, what are you eating? And what are you drinking? You are drinking and eating. And you are basking in eternal life. So can you see, honey, from the three things? Number one, he talked about temple. They were thinking of building. He was talking about his body. Number two, he talked about Sabbath. They were thinking of Saturday. He was talking about himself. Number three, he's talking of bread. They are thinking of two, one, two. But he's talking of his body. Somebody shout revelation knowledge. Say with me right now, I have eternal life. Jump on your feet and say it very loud. Right now, I have eternal life. Say it very loud. Right now, I have eternal life. Now say this one very loud. Let it slap the devil's face. I shall and will never die. Now turn to your neighbor. I, your neighbor, and say, I can never die. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, I didn't eat bread. I didn't drink ribina. So I will not die. Because when you eat bread and ribina, you die. But I have eaten the bread that came from heaven. And I have drank the eternal blood. Therefore, I have everlasting life. Say with me, this life 
is self-contained. It has everything that I need in it. Now shout it very loud. I lack nothing. Now turn to your neighbor, point your finger to your neighbor and say you don't have a faith problem. You don't have a power problem. You don't have a love problem. And you don't have a life problem. All problems are solved by the life of God on your inside. I thought somebody would shout that amen on a note of finality. Say I acknowledge the life of God in my body. Body, be strong, be well, be healthy. Right now, in Jesus' name. I thought I would hear a powerful amen. The moment you acknowledge what is in you, it becomes effectual. So if there is sickness, that power heals it. If there is a challenge, a miracle happens. When you acknowledge, your faith becomes effectual. I speak over you tonight. As your hand is lifted up and your amen is coming like thunder, every barrier is dismantled. Oppositions bow. Limitations taken away. In the name of Jesus, body be healed. Body be well. 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 In the name of Jesus. Receive creative miracles. Receive creative miracles. Receive financial miracles. In the name of Jesus. And I decree from this night testimonies of the effectiveness of your faith manifesting all over the place. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed beyond the cost. You are kept in the grace of God. In the name of Jesus, this week is your week of celebration. Grace is upon your life. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of final letter. Well, go ahead and rejoice for another 30 seconds. Is that how you rejoice? Give him praise. Glory. 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 Amen.